back to the car. <clears throat> I've got it really high in the air because I want to get the remainder of the brake hoses out from the underside, the other caliper off and get ready to paint the brake hoses and then that newly repainted fuel tank can go back in. This might not be brilliantly clear but that is the brake line that goes from uh, like that bit over there would be at the near side rear of the floor pan just ahead of the rear axle then it goes up behind the fuel tank down and out to the offside rear wheel most of the line is really nice the bit that's actually bolts right under the middle of the car is still in its original green paint doesn't even have any corrosion on it most of the rest of it is still in its original lovely green paint and it's really nice so I'm not going to bother rebuilding or remaking the whole line I'm just going to remake this end which comes up through the rear wheel arch it's covered in plastic so I'm just going to remove the plastic and see how far the rock goes back hopefully I need to out here then I can just join it and make that rear end um, and then I'm going to paint it all green because I have the bright green paint somewhere in an aerosol can. There we are. So hopefully uh, it will all look nice. Hopefully you can see this. Basically the, the metal pipe under the plastic cover is mint apart from the last little bit. So I'm going to remove the plastic covering back to here, swage a new end on there and then make a new end. If I don't have enough more room, I might actually have to cut the, the plastic right back to here. And then um, that'll give me a bit more room. I've trimmed about that much off the end. I'm keeping that so I know how much to make a new copper pipe, which I have there. I've just realised I don't have any more females. So I've shoved a male on there, which is the one I need. But I don't have any uh, good female pieces, so I'll have to buy a couple. Well, one to be precise, but I'll get some more anyway. Uh, I always forget how to use this beading tool again because it's so infrequently that I use it. But anyway, I'll nip that up, wind that in. Hopefully, ended up with the beaded end that I need. There are videos of me using this tool in the past when I was doing the diesel. So if you need to find out how, to, how they work, um, dig through the other videos. I did actually pop down Halfords and bought some more unions. So that is my little extension piece with a female crimped end, male with a little domed end that end, and then I've done my best on the steel to put a dome on there as well. And it does all lock together, so once that's wanged up tight that won't leak. So I can paint that green and refit it. That's the pipe painted, so that's all okay. That can be fitted in a minute. Over here we have the fuel tank with its, um, well, the brackets are over there. So I just realized I'm missing a bit. The rest of the pipes, I'm just working out how they all go. These aren't rusty at all, apart from some of the passivators come off that union, but it's all okay. But the rest of them, it's just dirt. So that's really excellent. I don't have to replace anything. These are all the pipes and hoses that connect to the fuel tank. So I'm just trying to work out what needs to be connected before the thing goes in the car. And basically I don't think anything needs to. That that can go in the car and then the pipes can go in afterwards if they need to. Um, some of the brackets are broken. So I've ordered some new little bars and the plastic grid things. What I have noticed is that one of these lines at the front is very what can only be described as a very strange shape so i'm guessing that that was a real fight to get out of the car whoever removed it and they kind of bent it into an interesting shape to get it out so i don't know what shape it's meant to be i will have to go and find some pictures of similar ones and then work out and probably base it around that but i think that goes up to the master cylinder um, and these ones went to the abs and then the fuel filter and the fuel rail return but we'll have to put it in the car to work it out fitted that metal brake line in the back and in here hopefully i have a correct car set of um, brake pipes 
for the calipers at the rear. Sorry, not full card set, front and rear, obviously. So those ones, I think, are fronts. And yeah, those must be fronts. These must be rears. So here we are. That's the new joiner piece I made. That's the new hose. Sorry, the yeah, new rear brake hose. And that is a new clip for in there. Might need a hammer to set it. Basically, I bought a whole pack of them because there's quite a few on here. For instance, there's another one on that bracket there. Same on the other side. So I thought I might go buy a few new ones. No idea really how much of this you're going to see, but basically got all the fuel lines and fuel pipes under the car resting on that bucket, threaded up into the engine bay at that end. And then up here, the one I painted is now rooted across the top of there properly. The other ones come up here this way under the car and out through the near side rear wheel arch and um, I'm going to leave it for there for today because it's now getting pretty dark and it's cold. Kind of getting ready to put the fuel tank in so I thought it'd be a good idea to actually test the pump so I've plugged my power probe into a good battery and I probably won't be able to show this because I may not be able to get the probe in but I have just tested this and it did work. So you can hear the pump working, or I can anyway. Uh, I'm also going to check the float for the fuel gauge, which, for which I'll just put a multimeter across it, check it on resistance, and then turn the tank up and down and see if the resistance changes, and then that'll probably be good enough for me. That was just a very quick and dirty check, but yeah, I had it on 200 ohms, or is that kilo ohms? 200 ohms and I was getting, oh, I can't even remember the numbers now, but a significant distance for when the tank is up the correct way or when it's inverted, which means the float is doing something, so that's good enough for me. Getting ready to fit the tank. These are the two straps and I've just super glued the rubber onto them. They've all been cleaned up and painted in epoxy and then the rubber shielding put on. These are the two special bolts that I was missing, so I've had to buy these, um, which is annoying because I, I think I remember having them, but I didn't understand what they were, so I threw them away. So I've got new ones of those. They will slot into the underside of the car, and before I do that, I'm just going to give it another squirt of underbody clear film uh, anti-corrosion spray, and I'll also do some of the channels that these slot into. Here we are under the back of the car. There's my nice new brake line. Um, and these things slide into those holes there. And then the straps bolt into them, like so. So I need to go find some washers and some nuts um, to support that. The other end slides into holes up here, the other end of the strap. Um, so I'm just gonna give Excuse the shaking. This all a bit of a spray. Keep those brake lines looking nice. I'll do it properly with the camera out of the way, but you get the idea. Once again, nowhere, no, sorry, no idea where I'm up to in the videos, but at the back, the um, brake lines are in, they're done. The fuel tank is in with the fuel neck. Everything's back together. Um, everything is buttoned up, locked down and tidy. Uh, I'm working my way forward now. So I've connected all the fuel lines and the brake lines up, but they now need to be attached to the underside of the car. There are those plastic spaces that um, put all of the lines together. And I've bought another one of them and I've also bought some of the metal brackets that hold them to the underside of the car. These are the new bracket things. Basically the lines are secured in one of these sorts of clips which sits on one of these metal brackets and then the whole thing is bolted to the underside of the car. One of my clips has disintegrated. These all look a bit sad so I've bought three new ones. Um, there's 
got one or two which are actually quite nice so I'll give them a dusting of silver and they can go back in and really it's just a case of getting that underneath the car arranging all the pipes nicely and then securing them pretty boring but um, necessary probably could have done with jacking the car up a bit more for this but basically got one in there the old bracket for the, for the rear has pretty much disintegrated it's just like really brittle plastic now so the new clip can go on up there and then shiny new bracket on top car is back on the ground just fiddling around with the bonnet latch now that the rad and intercooler are sort of mounted that whole area is stiffened up a lot but the latch is still a bit too low so i'm gonna have to remove it file out the hole so i can lift the hole it's starting to get dark it's um, a few days after I was last working, I think, and it's also spitting slightly. But I wanted to mount the throttle body. That's a new one, that's the original one, but the socket for it was cracked, and the TPS isn't for a turbo. I don't think it matters, but um, I think I robbed that off the 420 GSI. I can't remember now. Uh, so basically, that's a good use TPS and throttle body and. Um, stepper motor idle valve thing so gonna fit that onto my lovely alloy intake pipey thing then i've got some new Michelors so i can actually finish terminating all of the boost pipes which will be quite exciting back with the turbo again i haven't done anything for the last few days but um i am considering my braking options I might have gone through this in a previous video, or I might not have done, I really can't remember. It's uh, the way it goes, trying to juggle projects. The car would originally have had calipers, I think they would have been similar to that, maybe a little bit smaller, 262mm um, discs. I'm fitting 28 something, uh, 282 is it, of uh, MG ZR 160 or ZS 180 and big calipers. These are actually calipers from a Rover 620 Ti, um, so they're pretty chunky things. But in order to get these to clear the disc, I think they need some attention in here because the 620 Ti disc is 23 mil wide. The ZR 160 and ZS 180 are 25 mil so the carrier can foul on the disc if you're not careful especially when rust builds up especially when stuff gets hot and expands so I'm going to jack the car up again take the wheel off again the disc is on there just dummy mounted I'm going to fit the carrier and just look at the clearance and see if I can see what's up um, I still haven't decided what master cylinder to fit because the original car when you fit a bigger caliper with a massive piston you end up with a very long pedal travel I bought some time ago and I'll have to go and dig it out a BRM master cylinder which has a bigger bore so for the pedal stroke you get more volume of fluid pushed out into the pistons so it should mean the pedal travel is lower but then reading last night somebody else had posted up saying that you have to change all the pipes and stuff. I'm not sure that's true, but I'm going to investigate that too.